I made a big mistake with these trees last year. I knew we had a lot of deer, but we waited too long to put cages around them. They got chewed up. This video will show you how to do better than me, so you can save your trees from deer damage or worse. Imagine you live in the forest. It's fall. There's lots of food to eat, like acorns, crab apples, grapes, walnuts, mushrooms. Everyone in the forest is busy munching, trying to put on weight for the cold winter. But every month that goes by, there's less and less food because we ate it all. Most of the fruit, like crab apples, it's not really good anymore. In January, you start to get hungry and eat maybe some struggle foods. Aww. That means food that's available, but isn't really Aww. your favorite. Yeah, my dog is going to be snoring throughout this entire video. So if you hear that, Aww. that's him. Aww. So in late winter, deer start eating small branches, bushes, and young trees. A two-year-old oak tree looks like a tasty snack in February. This is good for them in the short term, but not in the long term, because they eat them before they can grow up and produce fruit or nuts. Therefore, if you want your tree to grow up, you're gonna have to protect it from deer or other critters. The best way to do that is to use a fence. You might think, well, we never did this growing up. We had lots of trees and there was never a problem. There's a lot of things that I wouldn't miss about the 70s, but one of them is that the number of deer was a lot more balanced. We've turned so many forests and farms into houses. We've gotten rid of any predators that deer might have, their numbers have just gone crazy. They've started hanging out in our neighborhoods. Deer population is a spicy issue, and it's important to remember that deer are native, but the imbalance in the population is causing some problems. So this is caused by deer eating the tree? Not exactly. These aren't teeth marks. This is damage from something called buck rub. Deer have a lot of ways of talking to each other, letting each other know who's around. One of those ways is by scraping a tree with their antlers. This is, wait, this is not a deer, okay? I, I understand this is not, stock videos are expensive. If you would like better quality stock videos, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Look, I'll be 100% real with you, I am not an expert on white-tailed deer. I'm just starting to learn about their behavior. It's super fascinating, awesome animal. There are a lot of experienced YouTubers with a ton of knowledge who are a great resource if you'd like to learn more. From a little bit of what I've learned from them, buck rub or deer scrapes are just one of the many ways that deer, especially the males, can get some exercise and let the other deer know, hey, I'm in town. The bucks really get in there and push against this bark. They like a tree with some give to it, but not so small that there's no resistance. Think of it like a training bag. They rub their antlers on the bark and if they do it long enough they will wear a hole in the bark. You can see there's some gnarly damage left behind. This healthy bitternut hickory is likely going to die early because of this wound. I can't blame the deer. This hickory is a valuable species that was planted here on purpose, out in the open with no protection. A strong buck probably couldn't resist using this tree as a way to send a message to the ladies or other bucks in the area. It's November already, which is prime time for them to rub on these trees. So we really have to protect what we have before the deer start going buck wild. <laughs> A large welded wire fence is a good way to protect your trees from deer. But even with the cage, you're not out of the woods yet. There's another danger that's not so easy to see. You don't have to be big to create a lot of damage. Imagine you planted a baby tree, put a cage around it. You even went around the bottom to make sure it was secure. And in the spring, you come out to check on your tree and you notice, what? There's a ring at the bottom of your tree where all the bark is gone. What happened? Your tree was girdled by mice or rabbits or another small animal. Just like the deer, bunnies get hungry in the late winter too, and they'll eat small trees and twigs. But they're kind of picky sometimes, and instead of eating the whole thing, they just eat the nutritious part around the outside of the tree. The bark is kind of where the sap is, the sugar of the tree. They eat all the way around up to wherever they can reach and then leave. Small mammals can get through the fence and and get right to the tree. Some nurseries also use like a white crinkle tubing. I just use the wire mesh or hardware cloth. Okay, so I know I have to protect my trees. When can I take these cages off? Two things. When the branches are out of the reach of deer, like five to six feet tall, they won't be able to reach the branches anymore to eat them. Great. 
Usually bucks like skinnier trees to rub up against. So the thicker your tree is, the safer it is. But they do occasionally rub on larger trees. So it's gonna be based on how much deer pressure you have, how exposed the tree is. They really like to rub on trees that are out in the open with nothing else around them. And three, what kind of risk do you like to take? If you really hate the cages, you can take them off once the tree is about 10 inches around. But for me, if I lost a tree I'd been growing for 15 years because I wouldn't leave a cage around it, I would be very sad. But I'm on the cautious side, you do you, everyone is different. If you live near a river, beavers can do a ton of damage, even to large trees. So you may have to protect your deer from beavers forever. I would use the hardware cloth or the wire cage probably for the tree's whole life. Sorry for the bad news, I'd be devastated if I had a really mature tree and beavers took a huge chunk out of it. But that's mostly only if you live very close to a river. A lot of people also recommend tree tubes. I personally haven't used them before, so I can't give advice about them. But if you have a large area and you're restoring it or you're planting a food plot for wildlife, tree tubes are very practical. Some people are planting 50, 100, 200 trees. It's kind of a lot to make that many wire cages. So in that case, tree tubes might be the way to go. I'm gonna to talk to a very specific niche of people. You know who you are. If you have very heavy deer pressure, like a lot of deer, you may have to have cages that are six feet tall. It's always helpful to ask other landowners in your area how they deal with deer when growing trees. I can give general information that applies to most people, but if you know you're in an area with crazy deer pressure, you're playing the game on hard mode. The best people to ask are other successful people in your community who have some years working on the land. They're gonna have the local knowledge that you need to be successful, it can be done. If you put cages on your trees, please remember to adjust the cages or take them off if they're starting to get tight. Forgetting to remove a cage will kill the tree. Your land is alive and growing. It's never set it and forget it. If you sell your property, tell the buyer that your trees have cages on them. If you're buying a new property, check all the trees to see if there's fencing around them. If you're having a good time, it would make me so happy if you'd subscribe to the channel. I want to get 1,000 subscribers by the end of the year. You can help me meet that goal. All right, we'll need some materials. You need some kind of stake. I recommend five foot T posts. Rebar or bamboo will do in a pinch. For fencing, I would recommend five foot welded wire fencing. You can use what's called cattle panel. You can get this kind of fencing at the big box store or at tractor supply. You can also use this green wire fence. It's a little less durable, but it's more attractive if you live in a neighborhood that demands that. Zip ties. A medium gauge zip tie is fine. I don't like the really flimsy ones and you don't need anything super, super strong. A post driver. This is really helpful, great tool to borrow from somebody else, or you can buy it. This one's $40. They last literally forever. You'll need some kind of wire mesh cloth or a hardware cloth. This can come in this wire mesh or in half inch squares. You'll need wire cutters or tin snips. The wire cutters most people have in their toolbox at home will work on the green fencing because it's a little thinner, but for true cattle panel, you're going to need a better wire cutter. Something like this, you can find these online. You'll need some scissors to cut the hardware cloth, but the half inch wire cloth is going to need the wire cutters. In this case, my friend thought about this already. She's already protected the trees with a corrugated tubing. This works, but I'm gonna make it a little better. Cut the hardware cloth so it wraps around the tree's trunk more than once. If it's a wire mesh, it might hold its form just fine. You can roll it up to help it keep its shape. Step two, decide where to put your posts. Make sure the posts are inside the mulch ring. If you set up your cage and there's grass on the inside of the cage, you won't be able to mow the grass. So leave some mulch on the outside too. Give yourself a buffer. Grass is always trying to creep into the mulch. Look at it from a couple of angles and make sure your posts are evenly spaced. Step three, put the posts in. When you drive the posts in, make sure they aren't going every which way. It might look straight to you. Check for the angle every couple of times you hit it. Don't keep driving it in without checking the angle regularly. Step three, cut your fencing to wrap around. Make sure it's big enough. It's okay if it's a little too big because you can always overlap it or you can cut it. If it's too small, it's gonna be really annoying to fix. Step four, thread the T-post through your wire fencing. Bring it all the way to the ground to make sure your fence is touching the ground and not floating. Wrap it around the other T-post and bring it all the way back to where you started, making a nice round circle. Attach the fencing to the T-post with zip ties. 
Start at the bottom again. Make sure the fence is secure against the ground. Make adjustments to make sure it's a decent looking circle. Secure the fence to the other T posts with zip ties starting from the bottom. Cut all the extra off the zip ties. Make sure to bring the extra pieces back with you so you don't leave plastic in the woods. Success! Fencing the trees took me about an hour. I feel honored to be able to protect them and give them a long life, especially this bur oak right here. If you want to learn more about making a more eco-friendly garden space, check out this exciting video on removing lawn grass. Oh.